Okay, in this uh, example, we're going to work on solving the circuit with phasers using the mesh current method that you learned in your circuits one class. So we've got the circuit already set up. They did a nice job. They asked, they already gave us the phaser representation of everything so we don't have to convert to phasers. And we've been asked to find the phasers for V1, V2, and V3 given here in green. The only weird thing is that we have a dependent voltage source hanging out here and that's going to be this guy in blue, IX, that it's extending down through this 12 ohm resistor through this minus J16 ohm capacitor. So let's just jump right in. Like you learned in um, circuits one, we're just going to draw some currents around these loops. Call it I sub one. Call that one I sub two. And then we will just work on finding the equations for the voltages around these loops. So let's go ahead and do one. That'll start off with, we actually have a source, so that's 150 equals. Now we have, let's see, this first one, we have one ohm plus J two ohms, and that's times I sub one. Plus, now we're down here at V2, that's going to be 12 ohms minus J, 16 ohms. And that's, here's where I1 and I2 come against each other, so that's going to be times um, I1 minus I2. I think that's it for that one. That one's good to go. Let's take a look at equation number two. Um, we'll go ahead and start with there's no source and the dependent source is facing the wrong direction so we're going to call it so we can say zero equals let's just start there 39 i sub x um, and then we'll have plus then it's i or it's the same impedance 12 ohms minus j 16 ohms but now we're going the opposite direction so it's going to be i2 minus i1 Plus, now we're up here, and so we'll have 1 ohm plus J3 ohms times I2. And that's our second equation. And last but not least, we need to find IX, since that's our third unknown. And that's actually just this line right here, so that's going to be equal to I1 minus I2. So there we go. Just like before, use whatever your favorite uh, method for solving system of equations is to get your answers. We won't take the time to work them out by hand here because that would take forever. So, but you're going to get some results. You're going to get that I1 is equal to minus 26 minus J 52 amps. I2 is equal to minus 24 minus J 58 amps. And finally our IX is just the difference of those guys, minus two plus J six amps. Now we're ready to go back and find our voltages. So if we scroll up, V1 is just I1 times that impedance right there. So we'll say that V1 is equal to 1 plus J2 ohms times I1, which was minus 26 minus J52 amps. Now it gives us a V1 equal to 78 minus J104 volts. And that's our first solution. V2, remember it was equal to, let's see, that middle impedance, that vertical one, 12 minus J16. Times, this one's times IX. So I'm just gonna say times minus two plus J6 amps. And that one comes out to be 72 plus J104 volts.
there's our second solution. And then last but not least, the three was equal to one plus j3, that other impedance, that last impedance, times i2, which is minus um, 24 minus j58. And that's going to give us a final answer here of 150 minus j130 volts. And there we have it. There is the mesh current method in phasers or using phasers. And as you can see, it is no different than what you learned in your circuits one class. In fact, it's arguably a little bit easier. So, or I think it's a little bit easier. Um, so there we go. That's mesh current method. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we'll actually move on to something new, something you haven't seen in your Circuits 1 class. We're going to talk about transformers. So I'll see you then. Thank you.